welcome to the Raleigh Municipal Lighting Plant, December 9th, 2015 meeting. And I declare the meeting open at 7 p.m. This is a reminder, this meeting is being audio and video recorded digitally. Item number one, citizens query, 7 to 7.10 p.m. Okay, I'll skip down to item number three and that would be Raleigh Generation Project. I'll hand these out. Okay, then. Thank you. Thank you. So, we've been discussing this for some time now. Um, adding a generator within the town of Raleigh to help us um, with our mm -hmm. transmission, with our LMP, and with our ICAP and forward capacity market cost. Um, and we've gone through a number of um, issues with that. And what you have before you is just a little bit of a, a presentation that Greg from Tangent Energy has put together because we've kind of gone down a little bit of a different path because as you know, and we've talked about, the RNS reconstitution risk right. and the transmission savings probably aren't going to be there for us. So what I asked them to do was to concentrate more on the ICAP or capacity savings and the um, LMP savings. Okay. So we get a better idea that mm. this is what we can count on, but we can't really count on the other the transmission part of it, so I kind of want to leave that off, off the table okay. for now. I mean, if it does happen, great, but if it doesn't, you know, at least we know and we can we can have a good idea where this is going to go without those savings. So we'll just run, the, we'll run through this, and um, if you have any questions, just please stop me in the middle. Okay. Uh, the first page is just, as you know, capacity and transmission rates are accelerating. The costs are going up mm -hmm. every year. The, um, especially the forward capacity market costs, they do to increase substantially over the next few years. Lower peak loads will lower, uh, will lower costs. So lowering our load during peak times will decrease our cost. The solution that Tangent wants to give us is a shared savings generator or a two megawatt gas fire generator within the town of Raleigh behind the meter. Mm -hmm. So we'll install the generation at the substation We'll run during peak hours, and he's estimating about 620 hours annually. Okay. And it will lower our load during peak hours. Saving service reduces load via generation without RMLP capital expense to reduce RMLP costs. And all that means is we'll be paying, paying for the generator over a longer term through the savings that we're realizing from running the generator. Okay. So the three savings pool that um, that this payback is relying on is one is the ICAP savings and that represents 32 percent of the total savings and that would run about 36 hours to hit a one peak hour for the year and that reconstitution doesn't we had talked about that reconstitution doesn't affect that mm -hmm. um, the pool pool number two is the LMP savings which represents 39% of the total savings, and the generator would only run during high LMP price hours. So what that means is the generator is going to reduce, I mean, the generator is going to produce electricity mm -hmm. at a certain rate. So if that rate is below market rate, the generator will run. Will run. If it's above market rate, the generator won't run because it's not economical to do so. And again, low risk and there's no reconstitution. The, the third pool, which, you know, this is what we're not going to rely on, which is the transmission savings. Right. It is a large number. It's 30% of the total savings. So taking the 30% savings out of the overall picture, what it does basically is it just increases the amount of time that it's going to take to pay off the generator, basically. That's basically all it does. 
and that well what I asked Greg to do also is if things do change and the transmission savings come back mm -hmm. whether it be a year or two years three years five years whatever it may be what we'll be able to do is restructure the contract that we have with them in order to put that back in I mean if it's after a certain amount of time when mm -hmm. the generator is paid off it won't matter anyway we won't have to update the contract because we'll just automatically get the savings but if it's in the if it's in that first and if it's in the contracted phase we'll be able to update the contract in order to put this language in and then realize those savings all right next page So we had talked a while back about what happens if we do nothing. Well, this graph kind of demonstrates what if we do nothing. So the top line on the graph, the red line, is basically A, is do nothing. The left-hand axis is the price that we're going to pay for transmission and capacity costs. Um, and the bottom axis is the, the amount of years. The second line down the blue line is if we execute the savings service program with no transmission included, which means we're just going to rely on the capacity and the LMP savings pools and not the transmission. The bottom line is execute full savings service program, which means we have the transmission included in that. So there is substantial savings if we just if we just do the B line or the blue line. Yeah, it looks like a half million dollar savings. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Roughly half a million. And I do I did ask Greg or we'll ask Greg to get the actual numbers. It's make it easier to because mm -hmm. a graph you can't really see what the actual actual numbers are. Um but basically, one of the things I want to point out on the graph is if you look at the, gr the difference between the green line and the blue line, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. basically, the green line where it dips down is the actual, that's the time when the generator would have been paid off if we realize all three of those savings pools. If you look at the blue line, that dip where that generator is paid off is, is uh, looks probably five or six years further down the road. Right. So I mean, basically, that's where we're at with the with the two pools of money instead of the three. Any questions, comments? So over that time period, uh, basically fifteen years, going out, it, we would save by projection. Five point one million dollars over the fifteen years and miss savings if we do nothing. If we do nothing, wow. But I, I want what I want to point out too is I want to make that clear that that I don't I don't know if that number is the five point one is if we realize the full savings compared to the do nothing and I think the two point two is the blue line compared to the red line. Right. So it's just a little bit of a difference. It's about half. Yeah. And it, that, again, that's it's only a projection at this point, but mm -hmm. it's still impressive. Yeah, it is. Let me know when you're ready. We'll move on. Yeah. I just kind of... There's a quick math there. Roughly, that would be about two hundred and fifty dollars a year per customer. If we have two thousand customers, I'm just going really quick. Oh, the, the, if you take the two and a half million divided by, I'm not, I'm not following your math. Sorry. Yeah. Um, how many customers? I, I can't remember. I, I'm going by number of houses in the town. There's twenty two hundred or two uh, thousand. You can. At two thousand is a good. Two thousand. Okay. So then I come up with. About two hundred fifty dollars a year for savings. 
Yeah, significant. Mm -hmm. yeah. So moving on to the next page, um, the saving service contract highlights. Um, basically, the PPA contract structure as as a service, so there's no RFP required. Uh, the 15-year term, shorter 10-year term of transmission savings are included, which we're not we're trying not to look at that. Um, trans transition from contract contracted to owned phase determined by contracted ROI, return on investment, to investor during contracted phase. So he's thinking first the eight first eight to eleven years is mm -hmm. thereabouts is when the generator will be paid for and turned over to RMLP. Now we I think he'd given us a, an estimate on the uh, the life of the generator before because we're not running it constantly. Mm -hmm. So it should run the eleven years without any issue. Oh, to probably out to twenty five to thirty years without 30 any years. issues. Yeah, okay. uh, definitely will need maintenance, but other than that. Yeah, it, the maintenance is, um, it's, a, it's on a yearly maintenance program. Yeah. So during the own phase, which is after the contracted phase, RMLP owns, operates, incurs all costs and risk, and RMLP retains, I'm sorry, I skipped over a little bit of a part. So during the contracted phase, first 8 to 11 years, Tangent owns, operates, incurs all costs and risks. And RMLP retains 20% of PMP savings and 20% of LMP savings. And the balance goes to Tangent. So what that means is we're going to pay Tangent a certain amount of money for the for running the generator. Mm -hmm. So actually, it's easy to look on the next page. It'll show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. On the next page is a graph. And the top line is cash into utility, and the next line is cash out to utility. So what Tangent is saying, five hundred five thousand dollars would be savings. We pay them four hundred twenty one thousand dollars, so the the net cash value to the utility is eighty four thousand dollars in the first year. The the twenty percent of PMP savings basically tangent needs uh, management to run the generator. So their software, their proprietary software, tells them when to run the generator, switching it on and off, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And the same with twenty percent of the LMP savings. So that that money is going to tangent to help pay for the generator. So they have an incentive to keep that program up and running very smoothly. Mm -hmm. Yep. So during the own phase, uh, which is after the contracted phase, RMLP owns, operates, and incurs all costs and risks, and RMLP retains 80% of the PMP savings. Again, Tangent is taking the 20% for mm -hmm. the management piece of the program, and 100% of the LMP savings. So RMLP, there's no capital cost from RMLP. Mm -hmm. And there's positive cash flow to RMLP the first year. So Tangent provides full turnkey engineering, permitting, installation, commissioning. Tangent Peak Management Program act activates unit during peak hours automatically. Tangent assumes risk during contract phase, including reconstitution risk. Questions, comments on that page?
sounds too good to be true. Yeah. So just one one last page, and then we'll kind of chat a little bit about the whole thing. Okay. Um, the last page is the highlights savings service economics. So basically, we don't, we went over the graph a little bit already. You understand the the cash in, the cash out, mm -hmm. the net cash for utility, and the community cumulative net cash. So A, realize savings paid for the asset and service. Mm -hmm. No RMLP capital required. No additional RMLP operating expense or staff. Generation asset provides resi resiliency during all phases. RMLP has, has option to own generation asset at end of contract phase, which no, at no capital cost. And transmission can be included to shorten contracted phase and increase cash to RMLP. And no cost nor risk to RMLP. RMLP gains 2.1 million over 15 years, and the savings continue thereafter. Looking at the, um, the top graph, you'll see in year 12, if you look at the cum cumulative net cash, mm -hmm. it increases substantially in year 12. And it goes from 80 to 317,000. Yep. And what that is is basically in year 12, looking at this model, that unit would be ours, and all the savings, the 80% would come to us, and the LMP savings would come to us. Therein is the which is, you know, originally when we looked at this, um, it was they were talking four to five years, six years, right? You know, and that just shows you taking the transmission part of it out, it, it goes out another five years, but it's still. 11 years to me, I mean, it, it's up for the commissioners to decide how we want to go forward, but it still seems like it's a pretty good, pretty good deal if, mm -hmm. and I'll leave, I'll leave that if to my next, my next statement. Um, we're still looking at E&E &E to have us make sure the numbers that Greg's offering us are they agree with realistic yeah yeah they're realistic so that way we have a good basis to make a decision mm -hmm. on if we want to move forward um it's getting down to the wire where e and e is almost completed you know there's a few other after this there's a few other things that uh, tim is going to look at at e and e and that way he'll have a better idea of exactly what greg is presenting us mm -hmm. and be able to give us or We'll be able to decide on those numbers, you know, and then we can move, either move forward or not. At face value, looking at this, it looks it looks pretty good, even without the transmission savings. Yeah, I, I have to agree. You know, and and at some point, the transmission issues that we we think we have may change, or things <laughs> might change a little bit, or something. I mean the. It's, a, it's really a wild card, the transmission part of it. Mm -hmm. um, right now, and, I, and I've talked to, talked to um, Tangent Energy, I've talked to E&E, &E, and I've talked to Ruben and Rubman about, mm -hmm. all about the reconstitution risk, what, what it means to us, what, what everybody feels is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, the way it works right now, or the way it would work, let me start, start over, the way it works now is National Grid calls up our meters and reads the meters. Mm -hmm. So whatever those meters are reading, they add it together and that's our load that they, they send to the ISO so we could be billed. Mm -hmm. right. So the way reconstitution works, and I, I think we've gone over this before, but the way reconstitution works, the National Grid will read our meters. So let's say our load, they read our meters and it added up to 10 megawatts of load. Then they read the meter at the generator, and the generator said two megawatts of load. So reconstitution is adding the two megawatts from the generator back into the load. So our actual load is 12 megawatts. Mm -hmm. So when they send the data to the ISO, what's, what's a little bit of an unknown is which number are they going to send? Are they going to send the 10 megawatt number, or are they going to send the 12 megawatt number? What 
what everybody's feeling, and, and it's it's really just it's guesswork at this point. My feeling is we should leave it out and say because I have the feeling they're going to send the twelve megawatt number, mm -hmm. which means we're being reconstituted, whether we like it or not, on on both sides. So we're losing all those transmission savings. But is that actually going to be the case? And that's kind of why we want to structure the contract mm -hmm. and say, so both parties understand we can add this in, which they won't be, they won't have a problem with. Tangent will definitely not have a problem with adding that back in because if we add it back in, they get their money even faster. So it's a, it's a win-win for both of us, yeah. you know, if, if that actually does happen. It, it, and I tell you, it's, it's been a lot of work. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, can yeah. imagine. I can imagine. So, but you know, it's it's getting down to to crunch time. It's getting down to the nitty gritty. Yeah, it, is. it, it yeah. really is, and it's because um, we've only got like four years left. Well, before, and I think in the on the beginning of this, I don't think we mentioned it to the uh, to the audience, but by 2019 our costs are going to be 40 percent higher than they are in 2012 or were in 2012. Mm -hmm. So I mean that's a big hit. It's a big number. Yeah, it, it is. is. No yeah. question about it. Almost, you know, I, you can round it up to 50 percent. It's not that far from it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what we're really going to be facing if we don't do something. Right, right. Well, I guess what I'll, what I'll ask the commission is um, we have a memorandum of an understanding from Tangent. Um, I guess what I would ask is do you feel with what you have right now that, you know, what I should do is get that memorandum of understanding ready to go for the next commissioner's meeting? You know, pass it through legal, make sure everything's mm -hmm. good, and then at the next meeting, you know, we can decide if we have all the information that we need at that next meeting, if we want to execute that memorandum, then, you know, we'll have it ready to go. Yeah, yeah I would think, you know, would we have the other look, see at it before then, or will that take a little bit longer? I'm sorry, I didn't. Well, we were going to kind of look at the numbers one more time. I can, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can have, what I can do is I can pass, because it's going to take some time to get that, the MOU through legal. Yeah. So in during that time, it'll be going through it over the next month before our next meeting and then maybe ready for the next meeting when we get the other information from E&E. &E. So e &E, once we get yeah. the other information, we'll have, I think, basically whatever we need to make that decision. Okay, that'll work. And then at least the, the MOU is ready to go you know, yeah. so that we can make that decision and then just execute the MOU. Yeah, and that would be, next month will be the January, and that would probably be the good time to start because it's, we only get a couple of more months of winter and the things will be starting to, to percolate. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, so. you, you know, you talk to um, people living in the surrounding communities that don't have municipal light. <laughs> Electric bills have gone up dramatically. And <laughs> And I don't know, I, I think if we we didn't do anything by 2020, we'd be 40% well, we higher. Yeah, and it, that's, that's just unacceptable. Yeah. It, it really is. Uh, we can't, can't get to that high. No. And that's exactly what they want to force us to do, but they'd love to see us go to 40%. Mm -hmm. and then, I mean, we, by having this generation and, then, and the, those peak hours, I'm just doing this so people can understand. Mm -hmm. And having those generators in there, and they kick in during the peak time, that would keep that from going those peak hours yeah. and not driving us up into that the higher transmission rates. I think yeah. one thing they need to understand is that uh, peak hours sounds like a strange word, but mm -hmm. once we hit a peak, we're stuck with that peak for a year. And we pay for that year, that peak for a year mm -hmm. extra. We pay extra for that. This way, when we came up close to that peak hour, the gen these new these generators would kick in and drop 
you know, that peak, that that peak, peak load, load down, right. so we wouldn't be stuck with that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, question: um, We'll have two megawatts of two generators, each producing a megawatt, right? Uh, one generator producing two megawatts. Take two, two megawatts. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry. So if there wasn't a, we'd, we'd only be running one of those generators, right? Correct. Or would we kick both? both no, the, there'd be one, one generator. One generator itself. Or one generator. One, generator. Yeah. one unit. One unit. Two megawatt unit. Two megawatt unit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, uh, um, I think what you're trying to get at is islanding. Uh, islanding. Yeah, islanding. I can't even say Idling. it. Islanding. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, no, it's I islanding, like island. And what that means is, oh, okay. uh, is if we decided, or if there was some kind of emergency. We could actually run the two megawatt unit to supply load within the town, okay. not having to rely on the outside grid for support. Okay. That being said, th that's a little bit difficult because you're not going to be able to run the whole town. Right. You'll be run. You'll be able to run certain parts of the town. Okay. Is so that you know I, I said it, but it's it'd be very difficult. To do that, mm -hmm. but in in the case of a dire emergency, it probably could be done. Could be done. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We have at least some backup. Yeah. Not necessarily all backup. And I don't know where where Ipswich stands now with their generation, but they're still I, running. I know, and it might be possible to tie back into them. We still have the ties mm -hmm. between Ipswich and Raleigh when we were buying from them years ago. Yep. And depending on what we needed for load. If we could pick up another megawatt, we could probably do fairly well to yep. keep the most important things going. Right. Telephone service, uh, mm -hmm. communications. From our, the grocery store, gas station, police yeah. station, fire station. Nursing home, that type school, of thing. School, the nursing home, yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think it's, my way, I think it's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, we just can't let that forty percent thing happen. No, forty percent plus public safety. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's in, that's that's a no brainer. You're yeah. absolutely right. Okay. All any, right. Any if you have if you look it over anymore, you know if you feel like you want to look over it tonight. <laughs> <Yeah. more> and, <laughs> just if you if you have any questions, just don't be afraid to email me, call me, and you know I'll do the best I can to answer them. Well, it's been a lot to. Um, well, I mean, we've looked at several yeah. options, yeah. and we've been going back and forth, mm -hmm. and uh, this one seems to have come out as we thought it might well, the first time we looked at it, but we had some reservations there just to be sure. Yeah. I think we've done a due diligence at this mm -hmm. point. I think we've done a very, I mean, we've been talking about this for over a year now, mm -hmm. so we've definitely done, and this, I think we've come a long way to... Um, to making a very informed decision when it does happen, because we've considered all the options, we've considered all the um, different savings plans, different different pools of money. So I think we've done a lot in that case, yeah. yeah. And I don't think I think our site is probably fairly good for that type of an operation. I mean, we, we're really not in a crowded neighborhood, mm -mm. Uh, and I'm hoping that the uh, the gas unit is a little bit quieter than a diesel. They've um, the gas units have come a long way with their sound deadening within the within the unit itself. Mm -hmm. So the actual noise that it makes, I believe, is is rather small. It's mm -hmm. not like the old telephone diesels where they used twenty four years ago. That the, thing that thing went off. You thought you were at Logan Airport. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but now nowadays the, the the units are basically a tractor trailer, the box size mm -hmm. of a tractor trailer. And they're, I think they're relatively quiet, but we can definitely ask those questions if we, if we get to well, that Well, I just think, you know, I mean, we, we own the, the closest house that's there, so mm -hmm. it's, it's basically not too bad. So, I mean, it could be a lot worse. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Are these um, units hardened in the... In, um, this is something that the Defense Department was looking into, electromagnetic pulse. Are you familiar with that? I am, but I don't believe, I don't know if they are or not. I yeah. don't believe they are, but... <clears throat> they were, the Congress had been talking about going across the country 
in hardening the grid and to, it wouldn't cost that much, a couple of billion dollars, but to harden all the facilities. So if anybody ever you know, un unleashed a, a one of these electromagnetic pulse weapons, that would it would be hardened so our, all our you know, electricity wouldn't go down and everything. So mm -hmm. just, you know, Congress have been dragging their feet on this for years and years and years, and, but they should do do something about it. So, That's a good question. I don't, I don't know the answer to that, yeah. Okay. Okay, anything else, Ken? No, no. Okay. Move on. Move on to item four, which is Rowley Solar Opportunity. Uh, keep, to keep you up to date on what's going on with our, with our solar um, array opportunity, um, we have three sites that the, the company has uh, site control on, and they are actually uh, pushing for a fourth. Um, so the actual generation of the four arrays would be up to almost two megawatts mm -hmm. of solar generation. Wow. So maybe that'll help big too. That will help. Mm -hmm. it, it's solar downgrades a lot in the afternoon. So it, it, it generally Raleigh peaks. Our peak hour is four to six o'clock, four to seven o'clock mm -hmm. at night. Yeah, or in the afternoon. That's all of the, the bedroom community coming that's, home from work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so exactly it, it's what that is. you you can watch you can watch a, the load grow you know from two right to six o'clock on a on a warm mm -hmm. summer evening. Um, so at, at, but solar tends to tends to start drop down after that's two o'clock yes, two to three o'clock it as the sun it downs, starts to set again as yeah. yeah as the sun gets lower on the horizon the solar degrades somewhat so. Yeah. It'll help. It really won't help our peak that much. It will help on hot summer days when LMP is very high. We're not buying that two megawatts from from the grid. We're actually <clears throat> local sourcing it through solar. So, so yeah. which that will help. I'm in negotiations with the company right now to see where we can get the kilowatt hour price to. And it's it all it kind of a lot of it hinges on that four site um, economies of scale. So the bigger the better. So yeah. the f with the four sites, mm -hmm. we're looking at maybe in the six um, point eight cents range, mm. which all inclusive isn't that bad. Not bad. At I all. mean, it's solar, so it's it's mm -hmm. renewable energy. And it's two megawatts of it. So yeah. Um, he's they're working on the. I don't want to. Mm give the name of the last project until they, because they're in negotiations with them. Mm -hmm. So the, they'll get back to me, let me know how they make out with that. And I'll report back to the board saying where we're at okay. with either three sites, four sites, where the yeah. prices are. So we're still working on that. But the three sites that we, they do have site control are um, Country Gardens, um, Taylor, Zero Taylor Lane, and um, 545, 510 Newburyport Turnpike, I believe it is. So that's around uh, Spuds, not Spuds, no. Samards. Samards. Samards, yeah. Yeah, we're going to say right around Samards. Like right acro across the street. Is oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, so those, those three sites. And the fourth is in the works. Okay. Yeah. So as soon as I, um, as soon as I know anything, well, probably for the next meeting, I'll be able to tell you a lot more about the yeah, solar. And yeah. See where we're at with the negotiations and whatnot, so. Okay. A little old round is getting more than. It was. <laughs> yeah. So we go on to item five? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Operation maintenance and capital budget update. This would be um, a little beyond the third quarter update. Okay. Um, this is the as of the end of October. I'll just get let you look through it before we.
So when we first look at it, it looks a little scary. But when you really analyze it, uh, we're doing pretty well. We're doing pretty well, yes. Um, and I, next time, next next meeting, I'll, I'll get you a chart of um, so you can see how our revenue flows. Mm -hmm. um, I think Bob, you already know how this is, how this goes, but um, basically, we keep the rate at a pretty steady level throughout the course of the year. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you look at our revenue or expenses over a monthly basis, you see months that were negative. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, they call it the shoulder months. It's spring and fall. Basically, are the two sh the shoulder areas, and those areas were usually in in the red on those areas. Mm -hmm. And June, July, August, September is when we make most of our money. Mm -hmm. So our rate is set to basically average that out through the course of the year. So we're not increasing the rate during the summer and decreasing mm -hmm. it in the fall. It's a, it's a steady rate through the course of the year. So right now, uh, if you're looking at the first page, our profit for the year, uh, as of the end of October, is 301000 More than likely, you'll see that number decrease over the, by the time the end of the year comes along. And, and the reason for that is is during the shoulder months, like I said, usually we're in the red yeah. the last few months of the year. So that, that $300,000 will probably probably either stay, stay the same or decrease slightly before the end of the year. I think we're doing very well on the expenses side of it. There are, there's a couple of uh, items that we've already talked about um, that are in the red, uh, and those items are due to Unforeseen items that we've um, had to address uh, the, the winter from last year, as I had said before, uh, was harsh. And we've had some issues that we've had to deal with as far as that goes mm -hmm. with underground utilities. But I think everything else looks pretty good. On the front page, if you want to go over the revenue really quick, um, we'll take go kind of line by line. It, well, if you look at it, basically, as of the end of October, the only line item that um, might not get to the projected is the industrial sales. Um, right now, it will be projected to make four hundred eighty thousand. Mm -hmm. we're, we're at one ninety three right now. So I don't I don't foresee that making the budget number, but I foresee every other line item making the budget number. Why is that? You think the industrial sales uh, due to the rate change we had in April? Oh, okay. We've moved some some um, customers from different rates. Oh, okay. So oh, yeah, yes, yes. So you might see one rate, like um, the commercial sales medium. Mm -hmm. That rate will probably exceed, but the other rate will probably be a little bit less okay. uh, during the. Next year, we'll probably it'll probably be right on, as it's the rate just changed in April. No. Well, actually, we don't really operate the same as the, the town does. Uh, we're on a calendar for right. a year, so we're almost at the end of the calendar year mm. at this point. But it's not like the, the rest of the town's budget that is on a physical year. So, okay. 
There's only uh, well, probably maybe one thing in the, well, the payment to the town that may, but we've been um, putting that away through the course of the year, so that shouldn't make a dent in it at all. We've been putting the money away for it. Yeah. Pension and benefits. Yeah. 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 Questions? No, it looks pretty good, Dan. Good. good. Does. Mm. Thank you. All right. Go over the capital budget really quick and. I gave you one right now. You? Yes, you did. Okay. Towers and fixtures, but we've been replacing a lot of poles down on Main Street. That's and that's the reason for it. Yeah. Is um, and it's for, I'm assuming it's for space clearance. It, it's for space clearance, and it's it's basically the poles are reached their lifespan. Yeah. A lot of them have the the five foot extension metal bracket on them. Well, that was a <laughs> back in the late sixties. <laughs> okay. That was a single phase service down there until they put in uh, rally printing, added a new printing press to their, their operation. They were in the building that they were in when they went out, when they finally went out of business, but it was a, basically their, their barn that they had the, the presses in. And then also there was a large machine shop that moved in on Warehouse Lane Okay. that went three-phase. So we had to run that three-phase circuit. It, the three-phase circuit actually stopped at the Pine Grove School and that was in 1955-56 that that went in. Okay. So we had to run it from there down uh, to basically just almost across from uh, Cross Street. We ran the three phase. Okay. So it uh, was kind of a budgeted type situation <laughs> where it was, the budget was tight, so we, picked, we used the, the extension stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's definitely, it's it's a way to get away from changing the pole out, but now the poles have kind of reached the end of life, so we're definitely replacing them all now. How many did we replace this year? It's been a pile of them. I'd say at least 40, 50. 40. At least, off the top of my head. Yeah. I think all, all, most of those are on Main Street. That's, um, did you up the classes of any of these? The class, no. Well, yes, we have actually, because the classes that were set at that time were probably a class three or okay. four. Okay. And most of the ones you buy now are twos. Oh, that's good. The class twos. Yeah, three was a big one for us back then. Yeah. And there wasn't as much stuff on it. I mean, we didn't have as, as much telephone or particularly uh, fiber optic and, and mm -hmm. cable stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, back in those days. So, I mean, most of the poles that we set were class, class twos, not class fours. Yeah. You know, you didn't need that extra weight uh, support. So, we did redo Central Street because of the, uh, that was the main trunk lines of the telephone coming in and out of Oh, okay. But other than that, it was basically fours that we used all the time. Yeah, it's mostly class, we buy mostly class twos now. Yeah. 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 Which, you know, during storm periods, you don't have to worry about those. No. 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 But down. as they, with anything, I think, a class two now is what three used to be. And yeah, well, they, they did kind of uh, reduce the, uh, yeah. the dimensions slightly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But that, that's the case with most stuff nowadays, so. Yeah. But we're, we're buying class twos. And just so the audience knows, the class, there's five classes of pole, one, two, three, four, and five. Um, basically, five five is the smallest diameter, one is the largest now, the diameter. The only one that ever used fives around here was the telephone company. Yeah. Back roads. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Iron wire. Iron wire. In, in Insulators. The transit ran the cable on Route 1. Yeah. That was on class fives. That's right. That was 707, what was it? 70, oh, I can't remember the, the, the whole. It was 700 cable. Seven old like ten or something like that. That was transatlantic. 
And basically, they got away with the fives because of the, the spacing. They were less than a, than 100 feet. Yeah, they were. That was the weight yeah, of the whole like 70, 80 feet if you really pay some cable was like Yeah, oh yeah, that was a big cable. And when they went across the Atlantic, it was like... Yeah, uh, I know, I used to walk down it from pole to pole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why you had all the faults. <laughs> <laughs> uh, transportation uh, just just a quick note on that the um, transportation the 225 225,000 in there is for the new bucket truck <coughs> well we've already we purchased the chassis that's the 76907 <coughs> okay but the bucket will not be ready this year so what I'll do is I'll, I'll just move the remainder over to the next year's next capital year's budget. Capital. Yeah. yeah, you'll see that in January when I give you the new budgets. Okay. So, so Kylie's still building. Still building. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think he has the boom in stock, and he's just waiting for the body now. Okay. <laughs> Metal or fiberglass? Metal. Metal. Yeah. Steel still. Fiberglass is a large jump in price. Yeah, I mean, it was nice when, we, when it was first came out. Mm -hmm. you know, back at Benth, they were making their own steel bodies, and sometimes they didn't last quite as long. In, in this in this area, they don't tend to last as long. But you know, we keep the truck ten to twelve years, so it it tends to last long enough for us. Yeah. A busy shop. Kylie's definitely a busy oh, shop. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That looks good. Way under budget at this point. Yeah. That's good. When the capital side, it's not necessarily the, the best thing to be under no. too much. No, that's true. You want to invest. You want to invest. Investment. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it's. Reliability that you're looking for. That's exactly, that's our biggest selling point is our reliability. And the, yep. the bit, way to be reliable is to invest in the system. Absolutely. You cannot let it go. No. You just cannot do that. If you don't believe us, just talk to the national grid. Mm hmm. <laughs> so. Okay, is there any other comments or suggestions? Or? Nope. Anything else for us, Dan? Oh, have, you, uh, have you done anything on that contractors on working on the building? Has anything been done on that? No. Because no. I understand somebody stopped me the other day and saw a problem out front of the building. Saw a problem out front of the building? Yeah. <laughs> I saw them picking up glass. Oh, there was a, there was a uh, window broken. The the window in the eave up front had a pane broken out of it. Oh, yeah. So the guys went up and put a, glazed a new plane, pane in. Oh. But no, I haven't done anything with the new building. I didn't, I, know just, if, I didn't know if that was part of it. But, no. You know. The, um, I've kind of put that a little bit on the back burner oh, until I we know, get this. Oh, there's a lot going on. But right, we have a lot going I on. I just so had to ask if, yeah. if you've been done, done anything on it. Not yet. Hopefully after this is settled, I'll, that's my yeah, next yeah. undertaking. Okay. Like a motion to adjourn? I'll give you that motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay, motion made. And seconded. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried at 752.